Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilawpathology.com. In continuation with the hematopathology series, let's learn a very interesting topic today that's about lymphoid neoplasms. But before we understand what are lymphoid neoplasms, we need to understand what are the differences between leukemia and lymphoma, right? And then we'll move on to understanding of the classification of lymphoid neoplasms. And finally, let's learn about the general principles or general features of lymphoid neoplasms. We have seen this classification, right? So the neoplastic proliferation of white blood cells are categorized into lymphoid neoplasms, myeloid neoplasms and histiocytosis. Right, myeloid neoplasms. I have covered a uh, few topics in myeloid neoplasms. We have talked about acute myeloid leukemia. We have discussed about myelodysplastic syndromes and myelodysplastic neoplasms and myeloproliferative neoplasms. In today's session, let's learn about lymphoid neoplasms. Now, what are lymphoid neoplasms? These are the group of tumors of B cell, T cell, and NK cell origin. Okay. So before we understand lymphoid neoplasms, let us see what do you mean by leukemia and how is it different from lymphoma. Leukemia, these are white blood cell neoplasms which are which present with the widespread involvement of the bone marrow as well as the peripheral blood. Peripheral blood involvement is usually seen but it is not necessarily that it has to be there right so it is the white blood cell neoplasm with widespread involvement of bone marrow and the peripheral blood that's leukemia we have learned about acute myeloid leukemia right now what is lymphoma lymphoma are the proliferation of white blood cells typically lymphocytes that are usually present as discrete tissue masses. They are present with lymph node enlargements. They can present with tissue enlargement as discrete tissue masses. That's the basic difference between leukemia and lymphoma. Now, having said that, some of the lymphomas can spread to the blood and they look like leukemias. Also, some leukemias can appear as solid masses. So, which essentially means the term leukemia or lymphoma, they mostly reflect the usual pattern at the diagnosis and they are not strict boundaries. Okay, that's because some lymphomas can manifest as leukemias, some leukemias can be present as solid masses. So, that's about leukemias and lymphomas. We have seen that leukemias can be broadly categorized into acute and chronic leukemias. We have learned about acute myeloid leukemias. We will be learning about acute lymphoblastic leukemias. And the chronic leukemias are chronic myeloid leukemia and chronic lymphocytic leukemias. Now, how does WHO classify lymphoid neoplasms? They are broadly categorized as Precursor B cell neoplasms, which means these, these are neoplasms of the immature B cells. The second category is peripheral B cell neoplasm, which means they are neoplasms of the mature B cells. The third category is precursor T cell neoplasms, again neoplasms of immature T cells. Peripheral T cell and NK cell neoplasms, which are neoplasms of mature T cells and NK cells. And the last category are Hodgkin lymphomas. What are these? These are neoplasms of the Reed-Sternberg cells and variants. I have uh, covered extensively about the Hodgkin lymphoma. I'll be providing the link for the description in the description below. You can just go through that video and then learn about Hodgkin lymphomas. Now, what are precursor B cell neoplasms? They are B, A, LL, which means B cell type acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Peripheral B cell neoplasms include chronic lymphocytic leukemia or small lymphocytic lymphoma. It could be splenic B cell lymphomas and leukemias, could be marginal B cell lymphoma, could be mantle cell lymphoma, could be follicular lymphoma, could be diffuse large B cell lymphoma, Burkitt lymphoma, lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma, and various other plasma cell neoplasms. All these are mature B cell neoplasms, which are peripheral B cell neoplasms. 
Next one is precursor T cell lymphoma, just like BALL, it is TALL, T cell type of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And the peripheral T cell and NK cell neoplasms include mycosis fungoides, Cesare syndrome, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, adult T cell leukemia or lymphoma, extranodal NK or T cell lymphoma or NK cell leukemia. Okay, these are few of the mature T cell and NK cell neoplasms. In the last category, I told you Hodgkin lymphoma, which includes classical Hodgkin or classic Hodgkin lymphoma and nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. Classic Hodgkin lymphoma is further categorized into four different types. What is that? Mixed cellularity Hodgkin lymphoma, lymphocyte rich, lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma and so on. Now let us understand the important principles relevant to lymphoid neoplasms. The first important principle is that the diagnosis of lymphoid neoplasms is based not just morphology, it is based on morphology plus immunophenotyping and genetics, right? So clinical, it's, it, is, it is your clinical presentation which might help you in suspecting that this could be a lymphoid neoplasm, but the diagnosis is always based on the morphology, immunophenotyping and genetics, okay? Histopathological examination is mandatory, especially when you are seeing a lymph node involvement or involved tissue, which is essential for the diagnosis of lymphoid neoplasms. The second important principle is clonality. Clonality is a feature of malignancy in lymphoid neoplasms because all cells, they are all derived from a single transformed lymphoid progenitor, okay? Single transformed lymphoid progenitor cell, which means they are cells that have the same antigen receptor gene rearrangement. Okay, same antigen receptor gene rearrangement, it could be either immunoglobulin gene for B cells or T cell receptor gene for T cells. Okay, remember immunoglobulin gene if it is a B cell origin or T cell receptor gene if it is a T cell origin. The third principle is that most neoplasms resemble recognizable stages of lymphoid maturation. Just because they resemble those stages, this is actually the basis for classification of various lymphoid neoplasms, okay? Because morphologically and immunophenotypically, they resemble specific stages of B cell or T cell differentiation. 85 to 90 percent of the lymphoid neoplasms are of B cell origin, okay? The rest are most likely T cell and NK cell neoplasms are extremely rare. So, majority of the lymphoid neoplasms are B cell origin. The next principle in lymphoid neoplasm you should remember is that most of these neoplasms, immunological dysfunction is a common feature. Now, what do you mean by immunologic dysfunction, which basically means they can present with immunodeficiency states. Okay, and because of immunodeficiency, these patients have increased risk for development of infection or they have increased susceptibility to develop infections. They present with various infections. It can also result in autoimmunity because of the breakdown of self-tolerance. Okay, so these are the two important immunologic dysfunction which you should know in a lymphoid neoplasm. But having said that, Paradoxically, patients with congenital or acquired immunodeficiency, acquired immunodeficiency, for example, HIV, AIDS or post-transplant diseases, you know, they are at risk for development of lymphoid neoplasms. That's a paradox of the earlier statements stating that lymphoid neoplasms also have immunologic dysfunction. On the other hand, immunologic dysfunction states can also lead to lymphoid neoplasms. Next important principle is the neoplastic lymphocytes, whether it is B cell or T cell, they tend to home to specific sites. Now, what do you mean by that? Neoplastic B cells or T cells, they retain the homing patterns of the normal counterpart. Now, when I say retain the normal homing pattern, it means they, for example, the follicular lymphoma, you know, they tend to localize to the germinal centers of the lymph nodes. That's because this particular pattern is reg regulated by various adhesion molecules and the chemokine receptors. 
I told you follicular lymphoma, they localize to germinal centers. Similarly, cutaneous T cell lymphomas, they show predilection for skin. That is the meaning when I say neoplastic lymphocytes tend to home to specific sites, right? And the last important principle is that the patterns of the disease or the patterns of the spread in these diseases, they differ between Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. All other lymphoid neoplasms other than Hodgkin's, they are categorized as non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Now, what is the difference in these patterns? Hodgkin lymphoma, they characteristically spread in a stepwise fashion. Okay, the contagious manner from one lymph node, from one nodal group to another nodal group. That is a pattern, that is a pattern of spread of Hodgkin lymphoma. In contrast, non-Hodgkin lymphomas, they often show unpredictable behavior. Okay, they frequently involve the extra nodal sites as well. So that is a difference. Why do we need to know this difference? It's very important for staging of lymphomas. Okay, whether you are dealing with a non-Hodgkin lymphoma or Hodgkin lymphoma, this particular pattern of spread is important for you to understand the staging of these lymphoid neoplasms. It is important for staging for both Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, non-Hodgkin lymphomas, but it is more critical for the management of Hodgkin lymphomas. Okay, it is very important for you to diagnose that this is Hodgkin lymphoma because the management differs. Management is entirely different from how you treat a non-Hodgkin lymphoma as compared to Hodgkin lymphomas, right? So these are the various principles involved in the lymphoid neoplasms. So that completes today's topic. We have learned what is the difference between leukemia and lymphoma. We have tried to classify the lymphoid neoplasms based on WHO classification. And finally, we did discuss about the general principles of various lymphoid neoplasms. Thank you for watching. I'll come out with a very interesting topic that's acute lymphoblastic leukemia in my next session. Still then, stay tuned. Bye-bye.